Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And today what I want to do is tell you why and what my experience has been like from switching to Linux. About six or seven weeks ago, I switched to Linux Mint. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a rash decision. I wrote out a list of all the things I needed to be able to do if I switched over to Linux because it's pretty common knowledge that not everything f works on Linux. You know, there's some stuff that doesn't. And some people, it's a deal breaker that, that, that a certain program is absolutely essential to what they do. And without it, they just ain't going to move. So, you know, I wanted to make sure I could do all the things that I normally do with my YouTube channel and with everything else I like to do and still have a pretty smooth experience and it be easy to work with and all of that. Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to choose a distro. So I chose Linux Mint because it it's the most stable from what I understand. And I got the Cinnamon Edition, which is the nicest version. It has, it's essentially discount windows. <laughs> Um, it does it does all the stuff that Windows does, and it has the the folders, and you can double click, you can mouse drive it. You don't have to use the terminal. You can use the terminal if you want. It's there, but you don't have to. You can you can pretty well do everything you need to do with a keyboard and mouse like normal, you know, like modern computing, not like the ancient days of the '80s when you typed it in in the terminal. You know, a lot of Linux users like to use the terminal, and I do a little stuff in it, but very little. I do most of my stuff like normal people do, not like power users in the Linux community. But mine had to be able to do, I had to be able to edit my videos, I had to be able to edit my photos, I had to be able to organize and store them onto my removable hard drives, and I had to be able to do OBS and get on the internet. As long as I could do basically those five things, then Linux would work for me. So I started down this path to see what all I would need to be able to do. At the time, I had Lightroom, and I had been using... Darn it, now I can't remember. I think it, was, it wasn't it was Luminar. It was one of the alternatives to Lightroom. But I had bought Lightroom last November sign back up whatever and i had used it maybe a year maybe a year and a half but i didn't use photoshop ever okay i do have to be able to edit thumbnails but i have been using a program called gimp ever since i've been on youtube for probably 10 or 15 years now i've made my thumbnails in gimp all right so the first program that i used or had to be able to, to work seamlessly is gimp and you see here, there's my thumbnail program. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see the whole thumbnail. You know, you can turn off the layers and turn them on, whatever. Draw all this stuff like I do. Place, move stuff around. Oh, come on. Give me the, cancel that crap. Give me the little draggy aroundy thingy. You can move stuff around, put it wherever you want. You get the point. It works. It's layers and you can do all the stuff that layers do. Everything that I want to do for a YouTube thumbnail, I can do in GIMP. All right, well, it actually works way faster on Linux. I guess they wrote it for Linux first and then they figured out how to make it work on Windows and Mac OS because my nine-year-old MacBook Pro has GIMP on it and it takes a while to load and it's almost instantaneous on this computer with Linux Mint, like shockingly fast. I was, I was blown away at how well it worked. But yeah, that was the first thing. What this is, is this is called Darktable. And this is like Lightroom. It's a raw file, non-destructive editor. It creates what is called a sidecar file of all your edits. So the original raw file isn't altered. You, it just uh, loads the sidecar file and puts it over here in your history. And there's all the stuff you did and it's all saved separately. That way you don't have to worry about damaging your original image. And it's kind of nice. And I mean, the image, the editor works fine. As you can see, this old Brightling is beautiful. I've done a bunch of edits to it. 
I could turn them off. You can turn them off one at a time, and you can see what it looks like without them. You know, I mean, you, I might, you might can go over here and turn off all the edits at once. I really don't remember how. <laughs> I'm sure that functionality is in here, like the whole before and after mode and all that. I'm sure that's in here. I just haven't learned how to do it. But I, my kind of editing is very rudimentary and not very high high level or very artistic i normally try to get my images right in camera so i don't have to spend a bunch of time editing i would rather be out taking photos as to be in here editing them so i don't spend a lot of my energy to learn how to be a very artistic or very powerful editor it's just not my stick so dark table works great and it's free so i don't have to pay a monthly subscription now, I closed down my Adobe subscription way before this whole Terms of Service debacle occurred. So my reasoning was I just wasn't using the software and it was a waste of money to, to continue to pay them a monthly fee for something that I just wasn't using. I would use Lightroom occasionally. Seriously, like once a month. It was pretty rare. Uh, most of the edits of the photos that I put in videos, I was using DaVinci Resolve's editing stuff for color correction to do my edits to the photos as i built the videos like if it looked a little dark i would go in there and, and raise the exposure with resolve <laughs> it was just easier i just dragged the picture in make the adjustments on the fly move on with the video you know i didn't have to do it in two programs and export and all that jazz it was so simple now we're on to the video editing problem i was using davinci resolve well, DaVinci Resolve has a Linux version. Problem is, it doesn't work all that well. I couldn't get it to work at all on my Linux Mint machine. After several hours of chasing down Reddit threads and doing all of these command line things that people said, do this and it'll work, didn't. Do this and it'll work, didn't. <laughs> so I eventually just pulled a plug on it and went and downloaded a program called Kden Live. And it looks like this. Let's see. And it's a nonlinear video editor. Works like a charm. Actually works better for me than DaVinci Resolve. I am, once again, a pretty rudimentary user. The rudimentary functionality of this works beautifully. It's got a bunch of complicated stuff. You can do all sorts of fancy stuff with this. But for what the, my editing style and the things I do, this works. Works great. And it doesn't crash. I would have so many crashes with Resolve in a Windows machine, a Windows 10 machine, that I was constantly hitting Control S just so I could make sure I lost a minimal amount of my edits when it crashed. Not if, when it crashed. That was frustrating. So I think in six or seven weeks now of using Linux Mint Cinnamon, that um, Debian edition, if that matters to you, um, I have had Caden Live crash once that I can remember. I know it was once. It locked up on me. And uh, it actually, the computer didn't lock up, just Caden Live. I went into the terminal, opened a program called HTOP, and it showed it in there frozen, and I was able to kill it in HTOP and not have to kill the whole machine and reboot it. So I just relaunched the program, reloaded my, my work, and um, it recovered the... Um, it has a the ability to restore a recovery file, I think. I, re I restored it and lost none of my edits. It was beautiful. So, for me, that worked. That was a win. So now, let's see. I've covered my thumbnails, my video editing, my photo editing. The only thing that was really left was web stuff. And, well, there's one other thing past this, and we'll get to that in just a second. But, you know, this is my website, and I edit my blog posts on the website. You know, and here they are. And um, I, if I log in through the browser, then I can actually do the back-end edits and all that jazz. But, as you can see, there's my website, and there's all the stuff. And, you know, like... There's the home page, whatever. You get the point. I just loaded a couple of instances of my website just so I could show you. But web browsing and like, 
I, like I said, I can do my blog post edits from here and it works fine and it, it gives me no problems. It works perfectly. The last thing on the list here. Let me switch it around. I think you can see what I'm hoping you can see here is that I'm showing you OBS and um, this is my streaming software and it works natively on Linux. I've just drug it up into the window that I was sharing to see if it'll actually share it with you. I'm hoping this is working because earlier it wasn't, but I'm gonna move it back now. But yeah, let me transition back over to me. I'm, but that's been my, my Linux, Linux experience has been great. I haven't had any trouble. I'm not a power user and I don't get in and write like scripts in the terminal. And I've, I've done a couple of little things in terminal, but most of the time I just Google search what I need to key in and just copy and paste the code and it goes, you know, but for the most part, you use the terminal to install stuff at times. But like I said, Google is your friend here or whatever search tool you use. I use Brave Web Browser and it works fine. But there's a couple of other programs on here I use, but they're not like real big deals that like I super need. Like I have the the snapshot tool that allows you to do screenshots. And I use that sometimes to grab like pictures of web pages to embed in a video. Like if I want to grab a page, a picture of B&H that has a camera for sale so I can drop it on the video when I'm talking about B&H selling a camera for a, for a visual. Uh, I use that some. I have the calculator on here. Then there's a, a tool that does design and circuit boards that I've been playing with a little bit, and it works pretty good. I have I haven't learned everything on it, and I have I have WhatsApp going on another panel to where I can chat with some people on WhatsApp. I just kind of leave it running over here to itself, but it just works. It works so well. Now my system is an AMD system. I have an AMD processor and motherboard. I'm pretty sure it's an AMD motherboard too. I'm, I don't remember, but um, the graphics card is an AMD 6600 XT, I think. It's a pretty new one, maybe a year or two old at this point. And it, it runs great. I didn't have to install any drivers. I mean, I just hooked it up. I literally, the Windows hard drive is still in the computer. I unplugged the, um, the the communication cable, whatever that's called, the IDE cable or whatever it is called, and just plugged in a 128 gig SSD and laid it on top of the Windows hard drive because I was just test driving this and um, turned the machine on, stuck a thumb drive in it with Linux Mint on it. It installed and asked if I wanted to image it to whatever drive, and I picked that blank one, stuck it on there, and I've just been using it ever since. It's worked. And it's kind of, you know, the 128 gig is plenty of memory because I store all of my photos and video stuff on these removable hard drives. So, you know, they're terabytes and I don't have to worry about the onboard machine hard drive getting full because, you know, the, the stuff in the downloads folder you delete regularly and the documents folder has minimal stuff in it because I save most of it to those external hard drives. So for, for me, the switch to Linux was pretty painless and my experience has been very positive. Now the reason I done this switch was because Windows, which is my computer had, still technically has the hard drive it's in, it still has Windows 10 on it. it has Windows 10 on it, just like I just said. And that Windows is going end of life like a year from October as of the time of this video, which is June of 2024. And once that goes end of life, they'll just quit making software patches. So if someone finds an exploit after that time, you're just vulnerable. Well, my computer's old enough that it's not eligible for the Windows 11 update. It says it can, but it says it'll run in some kind of restricted capacity or something like that because it's, it's older hardware. Well, man, this Linux Mint brought it back to life. For me, it just works. So. Like I said, for the last six, seven weeks now, everything I've done has been a Linux operation. And I haven't I haven't missed it. I've, I've loved it. It's worked perfectly. For everything I've done, this has been great. So, 
my suggestion to you would be don't just blindly switch without first vetting that you have the programs you need that you need access to available in the OS that you're thinking of moving to. That's the key. For a lot of people, Photoshop is a big, big deal. Or Premiere Pro, which is their video editing suite. There's a lot of people that, that they're so used to using that software that it would be going backwards to use something else. And some of these people, they're doing it for their living, so they don't really have the choice. You know, so if, it's up to you, ultimately. For me, this was a good choice. For my workflow and for my edits, editing style and for just everything I do, this was a win. So I appreciate you watching. And until next time, I'm just going to be using Linux Mint and having a good time with it. I've been filming on the Nikon Z50. The, I don't even remember what brand this microphone is. It's a USB thing for what I'm doing. But until, until I see you again, get your camera out and go take a picture with it. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.